Thing. This is Tara. She's a brown bear. Hi, everybody. My name is Jared Weathers, and welcome back to the channel. And today, we're going to keep going with the history of the National Football League Team Bios series. This time, we're talking about the Chicago Bears. Are you ready? The Bears were originally founded as the Decatur Staley's, named after the A.E. Staley Food Starch Company based in Decatur, Illinois, as a company team, as was most common around this time. In 1920, former University of Illinois teammates George Hollis and Edward Judge Sterneman were hired to run the team. On September 17, 1920, 13 team reps, including for the Staley's, met in Canton, Ohio to form a brand new football league. They decided to form the league the American Professional Football Association, or what we know today, the National Football League. On October 3rd, 1920, the Staley's played their first official NFL game. Official team and league records cite Hollis as the owner since he took over ownership in 1920 from A.E. Staley. The Staley's won 10 games in the 1920 season, but they lost the championship game to the Akron Pros. There was no official scheduling in the 1920 season, so teams played different amounts of games. The Staley's moved to Chicago for the 1921 season and ended with a 10-1-1 record for their first APFA championship. In 1922, Hollis changed the name of the Chicago Staley's to the Chicago Bears. Later in his biography, he explained the change of the name by stating... Quote, if baseball players are Cubs, then football players must be Bears. As he wanted to keep the naming convention of the MLB team and football players are generally bigger than baseball players. One of Hollis's highlights came from his move to sign halfback Red Grange for $100,000. In 1925, Americans were starting to dislike the NFL as they enjoyed the pure sport of college football. So Hollis decided to go on a 17-game road trip to show off Grange to more Americans. The tour began on Thanksgiving at Wrigley Field against crosstown rivals the Chicago Cardinals. They tied 0-0. The Bears posted an 11-4-2 record. The road trip did the trick and impressed many Americans. Grange left the Bears after a contract dispute in 1926 and established his own league, the first American Football League. This folded after a year, and his team, the New York Yankees, were admitted into the NFL. Grange injured his knee in the first game of the 1927 season against the Bears, and was forced to sit out the 1928 season. Grange returned to Chi Town in 1929. George Hollis retired as player and coach, and appointed Ralph Jones as his new head coach. In 1930, the Bears ended the season 9-4-1. The Bears and the Cardinals played the first indoor football game on December 15th at Chicago Stadium in a charity game for those affected by the Great Depression. Due to limitations, the field was only 80 yards. The Bears beat their crosstown rivals 9-7. In 1932, the Bears and the Portsmouth Spartans tied for first place and they played an unofficial championship playoff game which the Bears won and captured the NFL championship before 11,198 fans in the Chicago Stadium. After this game, the NFL instituted various rule changes, including splitting up the league into two geographical divisions and the official establishment of a championship game. In 1933, George Hallis became the head coach once again. Hallis led the Bears to the first ever Western Division title and the first ever NFL championship winning against the New York Giants 23-21. In 1934, the Bears dominated the league with a 13-0 record, losing to the Giants in the NFL Championship game 30-13. From 1940 to 1946, the Bears were considered a dynasty, getting the nickname Monsters of the Midway. During the span of time, the Bears went to five championship games and won four of them. In the 1940 NFL Championship, Hollis introduced his T-formation. He collaborated with University of Chicago football coach Clark Shaughnessy. The formation shocked and confused the Redskins as the Bears won 73-0, an NFL record that still stands to this day. In 1941, the Bears and Packers battled to a 10-1-0 tie for the first place in the Western Division. 
the Bears won that one playoff game after the team split their regular season matchups. The Bears won 33-14 and went on to beat the New York Giants 37-9 to win the championship. The Bears started the 1942 season before George Hallis left the fight in World War II, as well did 45 players on the team. This caused a shortage and nearly led to the Cardinals and Bears merging much like the Eagles and Steelers did in Pennsylvania. Hollis's hand-picked successors, Hunk Anderson and Luke Johnsos, ran the team until Hollis returned in 46. After Hollis returned and most of the players came back, the team regained their magic after posting a losing season in 45. The Bears beat the New York Giants again, the second time in five years to win the NFL championship for a seventh time. In 1950, the Bears lost the conference playoff versus the Rams 24-14. In 1956, the Bears posted a 9-2 record qualifying for the NFL championship game. The first time in 10 years versus the Giants, a team they beat twice in the last decade. This time was not a repeat as the Giants beat the Bears 47-7. The Bears returned to the NFL championship in 1963 versus the New York Giants and beat them 14-10 for their 8th NFL championship. George Hollis won Coach of the Year in 1963 and again in 1965. In 1967, the NFL added divisions with the Bears joining the Central Division. In 1970, after the NFL-AFL merger, the Bears, Lions, Packers, and Vikings were the National Football Conference in the Central Division. In 1973, Wally Chambers won Defensive Rookie of the Year. In 1976, the Central Division got a new team, an expansion team named the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In 1977, the Bears posted a 9-5 record, getting them to the second in the Central Division, losing to the Cowboys 37-7. In 1979, the Bears made it to the playoffs once again, but lost to the Eagles in the wildcard round 27-17. In 1982, Chicago Bears owner George Hallis offered Mike Ditka a job, marking his return to his former team. On October 31st, 1983, George Hallis died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 88. <laughs> In 1984, the Bears got to the playoffs beating the Redskins 23-19 in the divisional round but lost to the 49ers in the NFC Championship 23-0. The next year, the Bears went 15-1, winning the Super Bowl. If you want to know more in-depth analysis, there's ESPN 30 for 30 called the 85 Bears. It's a great documentary. Okay, we're going to move on now. And this decade, the Bears beat the Eagles 16-6, eventually losing to the 49ers in the NFC Championship game 28-3. Mike Singletary won Defensive Player of the Year, and Mike Ditka won Coach of the Year. Starting off the 90s on a high note, the Bears got in the playoffs in 90, beating the New Orleans Saints in the wild card 16-6, losing in the divisional round to the New York Giants 31-3. Mike Carrier won Defensive Rookie of the Year, and Mike Singletary won the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. In 1991, the Bears went 11-5, getting to the wild card round again, but this playoff run ended here as they got beat by the Dallas Cowboys 17-13. The Bears went 5-11, placing 4th in the NFC Central. After this season, Mike Ditka got fired by team president Mike McCaskey. On January 19, 1993, Dave Wonstadt was hired to replace Mike Ditka as the Chicago Bears head coach. During the 1993 season, the Bears played their 1,000th franchise game and beat the Atlanta Falcons 6 to nothing at Soldier Field. The first year under Wonstadt, the Bears placed 4th in the NFC Central, posting a record of 7-9. In 1994, the Bears placed 4th again, but got a playoff berth. The Bears beat fellow NFC Central team the Minnesota Vikings 35-18. The Bears then went to the divisional playoffs to lose to the San Francisco 49ers 44-15. This would be the last time under Dave Wonstadt that the Bears got to the playoffs. Dick Jaron was hired by Mike McCaskey to replace Dave Wonstadt on January 23, 1999. Jaron's first season ended 6-10. During the 1999 season, former Chicago Bear and the namesake for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, Walter Payton, passed away on November 1st, 1999 at the age of 45. On April 15th, the first round of the draft was broadcasted at 12 p.m. at the theater at MSG. 
With the ninth pick overall, the Bears selected Brian Erlacher. The 2000 season, the first of the new millennium, started off with four losses. The fifth game came against their long rival, the Green Bay Packers. The Bears won the game 27-24 at Lambeau Field. Unfortunately, they could not keep these wins going as they lost the next three. After coming off a of bye week, the Bears defeated the Indianapolis Colts. Week 11, they traveled to Buffalo to lose to the Bills. Week 12, they went back to home and defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but in the games. Week 14, coming off a loss against the New York Jets, the Bears are back home to take on the Packers. They split all the rival games as they lost to the Packers 28-6. The Bears ended on a high note after defeating the Detroit Lions. This year, Brian Urlacher won Defensive Rookie of the Year, and Jim Flanagan won the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. The 2001 season, the Bears ended the year 13-3 and got to the divisional round, and lost to the Philadelphia Eagles. Dick Jarn won the Coach of the Year Award, and Anthony Thomas won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Dick Jarn was fired after the 2003 season after not reaching the playoffs for two years. Lovey Smith, former Rams defensive coordinator, was hired in 2004 after Dick Jarn was fired. Smith's big goals for the Bears were 1. End the Packers' reign in the division, 2. Win the division, and 3. Win the Super Bowl. The Bears lost starting quarterback Rex Grossman with a season-ending knee injury. With this, the Bears had three quarterbacks, Gray Krenzel, Jonathan Quinn, and Chad Hutchinson. Smith's first year ended 5-11. In 2005, Rex Grossman suffered a broken ankle against the St. Louis Rams. Smith started backup quarterback Kyle Orton. Orton and the Bears topped the division at 11-5, losing the divisional round of the playoffs to the Carolina Panthers 29-21. Lovey Smith won Coach of the Year, and Brian Urlacher won Defensive Player of the Year. The 2006 was Lovey Smith's best year in Chicago. In the 2006 draft, the Chicago Bears selected Devin Hester, a cornerback from the University of Miami. The 2006 preseason went okay. They split the games 2-2. Two and two. To start out the season, the Bears traveled to Lambeau Field to take on their rivals, the Green Bay Packers, winning the game and notably shutting out the Packers for the first time under quarterback Brett Favre. Week 2 is at home against the, another NFC North team with the Lions. Roy Williams, a wide receiver for the Lions, guaranteed a victory. This did not come to fruition as the Bears beat the Lions 34-7, beginning a win streak. Week 3 comes to us from the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. The Bears' offense had a bad start, but they got it together in the fourth quarter, ending the game 19-16 and extending the win streak. The Bears stayed home for the next two weeks. Week 4, they took advantage of the Seahawks not having Sean Alexander, defeating them 37-6. Week 5 marked the return of Dick Jarn to Soldier Field. The Bears defeated the Bills 40-7. The second week straight, they beat their opponent by more than 30 points. Week 6 is against the Bears' former crosstown rival, the Arizona Cardinals. The Cards lost by 1, ending the game 23-24. Week 7 is a bye. Week 8 is the 49ers. Week 9 is another defeat, 31-13. Week 10, the streak returns from the dead, beating the Giants, extending the rivalry. Week 11 is the J-E-T-S Jets. The Bears beat the Jets 10 to nothing. Next is the Patriots, and I'm sure you know what happened, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The Pats won 13 to 17. Week 13, the Bears are back at home and defeat the Vikings again. Week 14 is the Rams, and they fall to the Bears as well. Week 15 is against the Buccaneers, and they sink to the Bears 34 to 31. Week 16 is the Lions and the Bears win 21 to 26. Week 17 is the end of the season and this ends with the Bears versus the Packers. This, however, does not end with the Bears being triumphant. The Packers won 26 to 7. The Bears ended the season 13 to 3, making the playoffs. The Bears won the divisional round against the Seahawks 27 to 24 in overtime. The Bears beat the Saints in the NFC Championship game. The Bears went on a roll coming into Super Bowl 41 against the Indianapolis Colts. However, none of the momentum transferred as they lost to the Colts 29 to 17. The 2007 season ended poorly, posting a 7 to 9 record, tying the Lions for third. 
2008 was a little better as they posed a 9-7 record, but still missed the playoffs. In 2009, during the offseason, their quarterback Rex Grossman became a free agent and signed with the Houston Texans. The Bears then traded their backup quarterback Kyle Orton to the Denver Broncos for their quarterback Jay Cutler, and they posted another 7-9 record. In 2010, the Bears won the NFC North with an 11-5 record. The Bears went on to the divisional round of the playoffs and beat the Seahawks 35-24. The NFC Championship game pitted heated rivals the Green Bay Packers versus the Chicago Bears. The Bears fought hard, but the Packers pulled out a win 21-14. The next two seasons ended with the Bears missing the playoffs. Lovey Smith was fired on December 31st, 2012. Mark Trestman was announced as the new Bears head coach on January 16, 2013. Charles Tillman won the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award in 2013. Trestman only lasted two seasons before not qualifying for the playoffs and being fired because of it. So now we enter the John Fox era. On January 16th, Ryan Pace, the new general manager, hired John Fox as the head coach of the Chicago Bears. In 2015, the Bears' record improved to 6-10, including a win over the Packers on Thanksgiving. In 2016, however, things would take a turn for the Bears. Jay Cutler, the starting QB, went down with injuries, so the backup Brian Hoyer started until he suffered a broken arm. This would mean that the third-string quarterback, Matt Barkley, would play. Week 8 would see Cutler return to the field until a couple weeks later against the Giants, Cutler suffered a shoulder injury, which means Barkley is back up against the Titans. The Titans would win the game by 6 points. The second game against the Packers saw an almost upset, but Mason Crosby hit a last-minute field goal and won 30-27. The Bears ended the season 3-13. The 27 season was a bit better, posting a 5-11 record, but I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. On January 1st, 2018, John Fox was fired. On January 8, 2018, Ryan Pace hired former Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator Matt Nagy. On September 2, 2018, the Bears traded away their 2019 and 2020 first-round picks to the Oakland Raiders for linebacker Khalil Mack. The 2018 season was a hit for Nagy. He took them to the playoffs in his first year, posting a record of 12-4, winning the division and losing the Arizona Cardinals in the wild card round 16-15. Matt Nagy won Coach of the Year. The Bears missed the playoffs in 2019, but they made it in 2020, losing to the New Orleans Saints in the wild card round 21-9. The Bears missed the playoffs again in 2021. On January 10, 2022, fourth-year head coach Matt Nagy and general manager Ryan Pace were both fired. On January 25, 2022, Ryan Pulse was hired to be the new general manager after the Buffalo Bills' Joe Sh Schoen withdrew. On January 27, 2022, Indianapolis Colts defensive coordinator Matt Eberfluss was hired to replace Matt Nagy.